Vector then activated his weapon. Omni's eyes thrust open from the pain. The heat he was generating stopped, and the blue energy left his eyes. Omni looked down at the golden spikes sticking out of his chest. Small spikes like thorns started growing off the sides of it. Vector detached himself from the spike and stood back. His hands started rubbing the burnt embers off of his face. Omni grabbed the golden spike with both hands and tried to pull it from his chest. The pain made him want to stop pulling on the spike, but that made him more determined to pull his hardest. Omni groaned as he pulled with all his might to pull the spike from his chest. Darkspeed and she looked on in horror. Vector fired a black beam at Darkspeed and struck him through the right shoulder. Darkspeed flinched back in pain and Vector was on him with the lightning glove again. Darkspeed fell to the ground shaking from the electricity that was tuned to paralyze supers. Vector then fired two more black beams through Darkspeed's knees. No more interference from you, Darkspeed. You, Junior Shogun, tend to him. I'd like you both to witness my victory. But if you do anything, stupid girl, I'll end you. She applied direct pressure to Darkspeed's wounds. The stealth needed him to defeat Vector. She knew she could not do it alone. He'll be fine in a little while. Did either of you think for a second that I didn't know that Omni was between us? That he was in this room? I told you I wouldn't kill you. Remember that, son? Omni was leaning against a table in the room, crippled by the pain. Vector grabbed the golden spike that protruded from Omni and twisted it to force Omni to his knees. Omni reached for Vector's hands, but was never able to place a hand on Vector. The barbs protruding from the golden spike were over an inch long now. Vector could now see out of both eyes as the heat damage started to heal. Vector looked closely at the technology that was added to Omni's armor. Vector fired several black beams at the device on Omni's belt and on the other circuits on his armor. The alarm on Vector's belt went off quickly. There, that takes care of that. Now my Omni detector is working again. The spike through your heart was designed to fluctuate in and out of time. It's there, and it's not there. Once it's activated, it stays in this time. Like it is in you now, Vector said. Vector pushed Omni backwards onto his back. The spike seemed to sink into the steel floor of the room. It kept drawing itself into the steel like it was burrowing down. I had this floor made of an ultra-strong steel alloy, all one piece, Vector continued, with pilings underneath to pin it to the rock formation around us. Omni tried to say something, but no words could come out of his mouth. Vector smiled and knelt close to him. Omni tried to grab for Vector. Vector blinked around Omni's hands. If I told you I had this floor built especially for this moment, if I told you I knew the time weapon would only keep you out of the game for a short while, if I told you I knew your brains would crack those childish codes, if I told you I knew you'd find your way to this room, if I told you I knew how this would end before it began, would you die feeling stupid? She could not listen to Vector's gloating any longer. She used her repulsion power to knock Vector back and pin him against the wall. From her wrist where she kept her throwing spikes, she used her power to fire them at the villain. Vector was struck by at least one spike before he shot at She with his black beams. One struck She through the thin part of her waist. Vector was released from her repulsion power. He rushed She and struck her repeatedly at high speed. She lay beaten, broken, and prone. Vector kicked her limp body a few more times, for interrupting his moment. You'll join me, son, or I will lay their deaths on your head. Don't ever kid yourself. You're not one of them. You have no idea your potential or the power incubating in your dark blood, but I do. I know because I put it there. Now excuse me while I kill an old friend. Vector stood over Omni once more. Vector pointed a finger at Omni's forehead and fired. The black beam did no damage to Omni. Still invulnerable? Vector continued. You were given the power of a god and the vision of an insect. I, on the other hand, was given the vision of a god and the intellect to make myself a god by stealing your power. Vector placed the palm of his golden hand against the end of the golden spike. The arm started to shake as it did something. On Vector's belt, a clear pouch started to grow. It was filling with a red liquid. With your blood, I will make myself a god, Vector said. That's one quart. Let's see how much I can get before your Omni heart stops. Vector smiled as he looked down on his foe and whispered, Never underestimate the power of hate. Darkspeed found he could move again, but remained still. He looked at the room and what was going on. Darkspeed knew he had to get this right the first time. Vector doesn't know how fast I heal. He does make mistakes after all, Darkspeed thought. In one movement, 
Darkspeed pulled his hood over his head and drew the second sword from Xi's back. He then leapt at Vector, who was connected to the golden spike out of Omni's chest. Darkspeed swung the Omnium blade as hard as he could at the golden arm. Vector's arm was sheared through at the elbow. Blood squirted from the inside of the golden arm. No! Vector screamed as he reached into the arm with his real hand to stop the leak of precious fluid. Darkspeed slashed at Vector with the sword. Vector only backed up in an effort to defend himself while he tried to stop Omni's blood from leaking. Once he was backed against the wall, he reached to activate his belt controls. Darkspeed knew Vector was about to disappear. He thrust forward with all his might and drove Xi's sword into his chest until it came back out the other end. Vector disappeared with a silvery flash. The sword through his heart went with him. In his place, three things fell to the ground. There were two bombs like the ones that blew off the top of the London HQ, and in between them was Stan. Stan slumped to the floor between the bombs, still wearing his hospital garb. Darkspeed looked at the timers and saw the same .0010 seconds that was on the other bombs. 25 seconds my time, Darkspeed thought. Darkspeed was pretty sure he would not be able to free Omni in time. If he couldn't get the golden spike out of himself with infinite strength, how could Darkspeed do it? Just the same, Darkspeed kicked the end of the spike viciously to see if it would move. It didn't. He pulled his hood back and turned to Stan. As he picked up Stan, he saw that both hands were shackled to short chains from the bombs. Darkspeed didn't bother to try and break them. He quickly picked up Xi's first sword that Vector dropped. It took at least three blows apiece to break the bonds. Fifteen seconds, Darkspeed thought. Darkspeed picked up Stan as carefully as he could. He focused his power precisely to void the effects of inertia and not injure Stan by moving him so fast. Once Stan was in the position Darkspeed needed, he took a step toward the exit and let Stan go. Without Darkspeed controlling his speed, Stan seemed to hang in the air. Gravity would take some time to bring him to the ground. Darkspeed picked up Xi, not as gently, and placed her in his arms. He then placed her under Stan and had the both of them stacked together in his arms. Darkspeed made his way through the exit and into the corridor. Less than five seconds, my time, Darkspeed thought. As Darkspeed made his way through Vector's command center, he saw the flash of the bombs from over his shoulder. He started running down the long corridors as fast as he could with his cargo. That explosion! These tunnels! Like the barrel of a gun, Darkspeed thought. With the speed turned up so high, there was no sound, just the light chasing him down the tunnel. Darkspeed found it in himself to move his fastest, even with his arms full. The light from the explosion behind him was very bright and reminded him how fast it was moving. Darkspeed was in the main corridor now, racing toward the shaft and up to safety. To his side, Darkspeed watched the explosion lick the walls with flame just a few feet behind him. You won't catch me, Darkspeed thought as his legs pumped. The shaft in front of Darkspeed took a steep angle up. Darkspeed used his power to change the angle of his inertia and run up the shaft. The flames seemed to slow behind him for a second and then they came up with renewed force. Darkspeed was almost out of the shaft when the flames touched his back. The bright lights in the air had force behind them. Darkspeed felt like this super hot wind was pushing him from behind. It was hard to keep his footing and his balance. Darkspeed watched the blue sky grow in front of him as he breached the shaft. He cleared the shaft and tried to keep a foot on the ground. He couldn't. The push from behind him sent him into the air. He and his cargo were now the bullets shot from the gun. To those watching, all the shafts and tunnels leading out of the underground complex blew with force. Darkspeed let his speed slow down as they flew skyward. He tried to crane his neck back to see how high they were. She and Stan had floated away from him. I hope the comms work, Darkspeed thought. Com, com, Darkspeed said to activate his communication system. This is Darkspeed. Cosmos, are you out there? I'm airborne with wounded. I need a soft catch. I repeat, I need a soft catch. Darkspeed tried to crane his head around to look for Cosmos. He hoped his comm system was working. He hoped was out there. He hoped Olympian would not try to catch them. Hard. Cosmos, are you out there? Darkspeed yelled into his comm. The air around Darkspeed started to get thick. It was hard for him to breathe in it. He tried to think if this is how it felt to go into space as he looked at the curve of the Earth from as high up as he was. The air was now getting thicker and stiffer, slowing Darkspeed and the other two near him. Their speed was slowly being bled off by the increased resistance of the air. Darkspeed knew this wasn't a natural thing. Keep your shirt on. Never alone, remember? Cosmo's voice said over Darkspeed's calm. Yes! Darkspeed thought.